full circle. And I'm here today with my sister friend, Kim Carter, and she has an amazing testimony. We crossed paths not too long ago speaking at the same conference, but I want you to hear from Kim, her story, and it begins with three days. Somebody say three days. And as you think about those three days, you're going to see what those three days means to you, Kim Carter. Well, first, thanks for considering me. I'm honored to even be here today. And yes, the three days. The three days for me was three days out of prison. Not knowing I was going to be able to stay free, not knowing what my life would be or where I would be going. And I was fortunate that the drug and alcohol program that I was in took me to a conference at Valley College. Lo and behold, here's Sister Jules Army Taylor, and she's a motivational speaker. And how many years ago was that, Kim? 21 years 21 ago. 21 years ago. And okay. I'm sitting there in the front row, and she's speaking, and she's speaking into my soul. She's pouring into my spirit. And I'm sitting there, and I started feeling weeping. I'm like, oh, my God, where's that little tear coming from? Because I still have my tough card now. I'm only three days out. Wow. And before you knew it, I was <gasps> I was just crying because she was speaking so much truth, so much power into my life about the possibilities. But if you just believe, and to hear it coming from her, and at that time in my life, it gave me what I needed to stay the path, to stay mm. at the program, to finish, mm. and to what would be the beginning of my future. And, I mean, I can't tell you that if I had not had that opportunity in those three days to see her, that my mind was already playing tricks on me. Mm. It was already convincing me that I wasn't in the right place. Yeah. It was already telling me that I need to go back from whence I came. Wow. And I know that was my history of repeated incarceration. Mm. And I knew I wanted to change. I knew in my soul I wanted to change, but I just didn't know how. So to have the opportunity three days in to hear this woman to the, I didn't even know. She would say things like, you're not broke. Your your money is circulating. And I was like, okay. <laughs> right then, I didn't have, I, mine was all in circulation. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have none in my pocket. And she was just saying things that was uplifting my spirit and making me believe that I could believe that my life could change. And so I was just astounded. You know, from that day, you know, I had two other opportunities to uh, see my sister. When I see her, I just light up because I know that it was that pivotal moment, the decision between going to the left and mm. going to the right. And being there at that conference with her helped me to choose to go to the right path. You know, she had another um, conference that came up, and I was able to go, and um, Dr. Um, sister Carolyn Tillman uh, looked at me and said, we need volunteers. We need you to give out honorariums. Now, I don't know what honorariums are, <laughs> but I know, I, want years to, ago. I know I want to volunteer to yes, give out yes. honorarium, honorariums. And so that she gave me an envelope full of envelopes full of money. And she said, as these speakers check in, give them their envelope. So I'm sitting there still in the belief system that I am being trusted by a complete stranger to yes. hold these envelopes. And the first envelope that I need to give out was to mm. Dr. Jill Diamond Taylor. And so I'm constantly having confirmation that you have changed. Your life is going in a different direction. And this woman and just keeps coming back into my life, coming back into my life at different intervals along this journey that I've been on called life. And I mean, it's just been so amazing. And, you know, it's just, it's just like when I was in the, presence of her and her sister and um you know I didn't have any clothes but I wasn't gonna tell them that these are mm. fabulous women they mm. are dynamic and so I was in donation closets and I was looking for outfits so for all of you guys to give donations to give yeah. the best I appreciate you because wow. I was able to wear one of those outfits to go to a conference with this woman right here and then when um they decided to go out to eat afterwards they said, come on girls we're gonna go out to eat and they invited <laughs> <to> me <laughs> so i felt so honored to be invited but the truth is i don't got no money i can't go with them and so something about that look in my face or something that mm -hmm. you saw mm -hmm. had you look at me and said you i got you you just come with me and i was like you got me she was like, yeah, so I had a chance to be around them even longer. And like a sponge, I just soaked up, this is what normal people do. This is what empowered women do. This is what mm. business women mm. do. This is what sisters who care do. Because I had never been around that. Remember, I've been in prison. Sisters in there who care are not surrounding you on a regular basis. And I mean, it's just been so phenomenal. And, you know, I mean, long story short, 
I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited right now for her to even be here wow. at Time for Change Foundation. I'm, I'm, thank you. And where am I? I am at her business facility, Time for Change organization, offices, staff doing great work, impacting the community. And we're going to talk about that in the second part. You're going to hear about all the wonderful things that she's done to give back. You see, when you've been blessed, you have to give back to the rest. And she's doing that. And you talked, um, Kim, about your belief system. And in one of my books, I talk about we live by our own BS. That saboteur that says you're not worthy, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not, you just can't do it. And I'm so glad that you were able to overcome that voice and I was able to plant a seed in your heart. I, I don't take credit. It was just God's grace that we were at the same place at the same time. And when I think of your story, I think that's not my story. Everybody has a different story. But I wanted to bring her story to you so that maybe you could say, wait a minute. I've been listening to this negative tape in my head. I've been allowing the saboteur to talk me out of starting my business, writing my book, getting clean and sober, going back to college, uh, saying no to abuse. Um, and I'm so proud of you. Every time I would see Kim, I'm like, oh, my God, 21 years, and you look so good. You look so happy. And I will make sure she remember me. Remember me? <laughs> yes, you <laughs> Hey, lady, remember me? I'm the one who did <laughs> and I'm mad because after 30 years of being on tour, nationally, internationally, everybody becomes a fog. But I cannot forget you, Kim. I cannot forget the positive impact that you've made on the community. And, you know, oftentimes I'm interviewed on the radio or television, and they'll say, well, can you give us a success story? And I'm so busy moving that I never stop to really document and uh, collect those success stories. I didn't understand the importance of that because I, in, in a way, I, it was my saboteur saying, that's being prideful. And every time I connect with you, I realize that it's important that I document. It's important that I remember these success stories, not to be puffed up, but to let people know that when you link up with other people that will encourage you, empower you, and pour into you, and you're with people like myself and like yourself, they have a heart for people, for humanity, non-judgmental. Because if it had not been for the grace of God, there go I. You know, I, I can understand that, but at the same time, when you know what you bring forth mm -hmm. and that God's giving you that gift, mm -hmm. I'm a confirmation yes. that what you was doing 21 years ago is still working. Mm -hmm. And if that's what it needs to help you stay the path and help you stay focused and doing what you're doing, then that's my purpose today mm. because I don't want you to ever think or forget that you're doing life-changing work. See, it's different when you're just talking to people and you're. I'm hoping you do well, but when you change the direction of someone's life, mm. For whatever reason, God blessed you with that gift and the opportunity to do that. But to know that that is what you do. That's something that you have to own. For so many times, we as women, we don't want to own our power. We don't want to own our, teaching. our strength. We don't want to own it because we yes. really still in disbelief that yes. God could be so good. Exactly. At. But he is good. And he can be good. And when he blesses us and we're highly favored, that's, these things are supposed to happen. You're supposed to change lives. You're supposed to be used as a nail or a hammer oh, in yeah. his building of his bigger plan. You better say it. And so as long as we are in accordance with that will and in accordance with what needs to be done, then I can't say I built a house, but I'm a nail holding that wall up really strong. <laughs> All right. And if that's the thing, I won't be claiming being the nail. Exactly. So, you know, I I said, and if you know, I've said every day of the week, I had three days out of prison after being in prison over 25 times. Couldn't stay out oh, no more than two weeks. 25 times. Come on now. That my life was already shown to me what it was going to be. I didn't know another way. I didn't know another way we existed. And here I was with, in three days with opportunity to stay somewhere for change. And my mind was saboteur, like she calls it, was already convincing me why I should go. Because I saw a man riding to the store on a horse. Something about that just freaked me out. What is he doing on the horse? Well, I'm in some desert somewhere there riding horses to the store. That's foreign to me. I need to get out of here. People are crazy. Because, mm. see, your mind would tell you anything to rob or destroy because the devil kind of sets in. Yes. And so my mind was telling me that. So at that conference, you know, as shut down and closed in as I was, 
she pierced that. Mm. She pierced that and she spoke into my heart. I'm telling you, I was sitting on the front row <clears throat> crying. Not the cool cry, because I had lost that like 10 or 15 minutes into it. <gasps> The ugly cry. The ugly cry like Oprah says. And I'm sitting here crying and she walks around with her microphone doing what she does. And she goes, but right now, I want to hear from some of you. I want to hear from some of you out there because you guys have stories too. And she goes, and I'm going to start with, with my baby right here. Mm -hmm. And gave me the microphone. I never held a microphone in my hand in my life. Here I am holding a microphone oh my in God. my hand. All I can say was, my name is Kim and I'm an alcoholic and an addict. And half the room said, hi, Kim. Wow. And do you know that day, there were women in that room that came to me that I still have in my life today. Really? That day, uh -huh, they, they, they came and took me from the program to 12-step meetings and stuff and to help me stay on the path because Damn. I shared so honestly and oh. purely at that moment. But... I didn't know what else to do because she gave me the mic. <laughs> and so I just shared where I was. And basically I was saying, hey, I just got out of prison. I only been here for three days and I don't know what to do. I don't know how my life's going to change. I don't know what I'm going to turn into. And I don't know what to do. And that's how the Lord lined everything up and everybody up, you know. And, I mean, it's ironic that, you know, years later, that we would grace the same stage. Now, yes. I, hold on. When I found out that I was going to be speaking at a conference, and she's going to be speaking at a conference, and we were going to be at the same dais, you know, there goes that staff of tour. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. I need to be in the audience. Jules speaking. I don't need, wait, this is not going to say she got this. <laughs> she got this. And so I said, okay, I can't, you know, check down on the people. They're here for the portion that I'm supposed to bring. Mm -hmm. And I did my, you know, what the Lord told me to do, which was financial education, money management. I'm a big proponent on getting our finances together. And as a result of that, um, she was able to hear me share, and I still share at that time how she impacted my life. I'm going to always give her honor and respect, and I love, you know, the ground that she walked on because I know that there have been um, people whose shoulders that I'm standing on. And I'm, I'm on her neck, I'm on her back, I'm on her <laughs> shoulder. Because now I try to grab the mic and do a little something. Yes. It's all because you are a motivational <laughs> speaker. Truly, truly. And I'm just so grateful for this time with Kim Carter. For those of you who's tuning in, you are listening to Kim Carter with Jewel Diamond Taylor, the self-esteem doctor. And I want you to stay tuned because we're going to have a second part. You're going to learn what she has been able to manifest, her passion how she's driven, how she's making an impact in the community. So I want you to stay tuned for the second part of this interview with Kim Carter. You're going to learn about timeforchangefoundation.org in the Inland Empire area of Southern California. Thank you so much for tuning in. And be sure to visit my website, do not give up net. Again, that's do not give up <laughs> net. Thank you. Whoa.